So we have observed uh, several times now that a uh, linear differential equation like this, where L is this linear operator applying to x, um, Lx equals f, we've observed several times that this is a lot like Ax equals b, these kinds of linear systems that you studied in linear algebra, where um, the functions x and f are replaced by the vectors x and b, respectively. In fact, we think of functions as as being vectors, um, and the matrix is getting, or the linear operator is getting replaced by a matrix. So there's a strong analogy here. Um, okay, so our interest now is in solving one of these kinds of um, differential equations, right? We already know how to handle the situation where you have zero here, right? You just to handle this situation, you guess uh, x equals e to the lambda t, and then you get a characteristic polynomial for lambda, and you get the three cases, and by now you know how to handle that. Um, but we are trying to handle the situation where now you have something not zero here. So let's rely a little bit on the analogy. Um, with these kinds of linear systems from linear algebra, if you find the general solution, not to this, but to the homogeneous version of this, where I put 0 here instead of b, say it's x sub g, then there is a way to get a general solution to the original non-homogeneous. So if you just find a general solution to the homogeneous, then to get a general solution to the original non-homogeneous, the general solution to this is like this. Take your general solution to the homogeneous, we call that x sub g, and then add, let's call it x sub p, where x sub p is just at least one, just one solution to the original non-homogeneous. So where x sub p is uh, some solution to the original non-homogeneous differential equation, or linear system. Same thing, actually, pretty much. So um, this is something that you learned about linear algebra, and I, th I think we had a lecture where we looked at it. Uh, and what that means for uh, for differential equations as well. Um, basically, it, it comes from the linearity of a, right? Like if I if I now apply a to this thing, then I get a applied to the first part plus a applied to the second part. And this one is zero because I'm saying that you know this solves the homogeneous linear system, so I just get a applied to the second part, and if the second part is a solution to ax equals b, then that should give me b. So that's why it works. Um, well, that, that at least shows you why this is, is always going to yield a solution to the original non-homogeneous linear system. Um, maybe it does not convince you that it gives you all of them, but that's also an argument that can be made, and I think we made it before. Okay, so do you see the strategy that this suggests? This is saying, hey, do you want to solve this? Do you want to find the general solution to this, meaning all solutions? Well, I have a deal for you. How about you find the general solution to this? We like this deal because we know how to do that in the differential equation setup. Um, and then, instead of finding a general solution to this, find just one solution, just one. Then take your general solution to this, and your one solution to this, and add them. Then that will be a general solution to, to this, to this. So that's a pretty good deal, right? That reduces our problem of trying to find a general solution to this, to just find one solution. 
then add it to your general solution to the homogeneous linear sy system that you already know how to find. So let me, so let me summarize that strategy. Written like this, it's a little confusing looking. Okay, so here's the, here's the question, or here's the deal. So hey, do you want to get the general solution to this non-homogeneous second order linear differential equation? So remember, when I'm writing this, if you forgot, that stands for something that's just a nice short way of writing this, right? I'm just writing L of x for the left-hand side here. So yeah, do you want to get a, get the general solution? Yes, we do. That's that's our business here. Um, so the deal is, get just one solution to this. Just get one, not the general solution. The general solution means all solutions, right? Just get one. That means, if, since we just want to get one, use any means necessary to get that one. Um, even guessing, which is pretty much close to what we're actually going to end up using. Uh, so by any means necessary, just get one. Somehow get your hands on just one solution. Then, get the general solution. To the homogeneous version of this. That we know how to do every time, right? It's guess e to the lambda t, and then you get the three cases. We know how to do that every single time. Um, so really the hard part of this whole setup is going to be this part, getting the one solution to this. This part is not hard in the sense that you already learned it and it, you have a system that works every time. then add them. And voila, that will be a general, the general solution to the original non-homogeneous differential equation up here. Okay, so this is like a, a three-step process here. Um, so this step here is easy in, in some sense. Um, it's just this method that we've been discussing of, of guessing e to the lambda t to try to get two linearly independent solutions to this thing. Which, by the way, when you do that, get two linearly independent solutions to this thing, um, your textbook has been calling those uh, fundamental solutions or something like that. Uh, so that's, that's what that means, just to link some terminology between lecture and textbook. So this part is easy. This part is, of course, easy. It's you just add them. That's it. And this is the hard part. Or at least right now, it's hard because we don't have a way to do it. But even when we have a way to do it, it's not really going to be a solid way to do it. It's going to be something that sometimes works depending on what is f of t. So what do we do here? Uh, that I will explain in the next video. And the method that I'm going to um, suggest is called the method of undetermined coefficients. So I'll use this acronym. So let's see that in the next video.